Oh, hello. <laughs> How is everyone doing out there? Just keeping an eye on things, making sure the stream is going well. If you are out there and you are able to watch or listen, let me know if you can hear me or see me and if the stream is going okay. You know, we always like to check in on those tech gremlins to see uh, how they're playing with us today, but hopefully, fingers crossed, today will go nice and smoothly. Welcome back to another Wednesday live stream pop-up art studio with the Living Room Community Art Studio. My name's Mary, and for the next hour and a half, I'm going to be hanging out here in our studio, the Living Room at Home, making art with you, connecting, creating, chatting, learning about what you're up to, the kind of things you're making these days or the things you're feeling like making these days. And we're just going to have some time to share with one another in a creative way. Hey, Wendy, how's it going? That's fantastic. So it's good. I know I'm out there. That's always a good thing. Please feel free if you feel comfortable, if you feel up to it, to say hi in the chat, to chat with other folks through the comments. If you know them, if you want to learn more about what they're working on, what they're up to, you're more than welcome to do that. You're more than welcome to ask questions in the chat. I'm going to keep, you know, try to keep up with what everyone's chatting about and answer any questions you have and just respond and share what you're writing out loud with folks. So when folks watch this back afterwards, once it's been archived, they can have a sense of what's happening and what's going on in our community in the same way that we would have if we were at the studio space sharing a table together and making art. You know what I mean? So for today, I hope you all are doing well. I don't know if you're feeling what I'm feeling, but uh, <sighs> feeling a little tired. I'm feeling. I'm feeling the season. I'm feeling the year. I'm feeling... Yeah, I'm feeling kind of like uh, in the center of this process of reevaluating everything and re like revisiting things that have, you know, passed long before and within this last year as well. We're still working from home, a lot of us, and a lot of us are still studying and learning from home or getting into some sort of strange hybrid way of moving forward, and that's okay. But just because things are, you know, back to a kind of normal doesn't mean that the weirdness isn't still taking a toll. So I'm going to be extra gentle with myself today. I invite you to be gentle with yourself as well. And if you're in a similar kind of reflective, maybe tired state, take today to create art that allows you to explore that or perhaps refuel, re-energize, maybe reflect on everything you've been through, the good, the bad, the weird, the ugly, perhaps give yourself an opportunity to honor what you've been through and celebrate everything that you've been able to achieve in this past year with all the strange uncertain things that we've been going through. And you know what? If you don't feel like doing that, that's okay too. Make whatever you feel like making, do whatever you feel comfortable to do. This is your time. I give you permission to create, to connect, to do whatever you need to do wherever you might be at. And maybe you don't feel like making art. And that's okay too. If all you want to do, if all you feel up to doing is listening or watching along, you're more than welcome to do so. That's part of the creative energy we're sharing here as well. That sometimes that's, you know, all we got. And that's all right. When you have the energy to contribute or if you'd like to put something in the comments to share a little bit about what kind of projects you're working on, what's inspiring you these days, please feel free. But otherwise, you're more than welcome just to sort of keep in the distance and take care of yourself in whatever way feels right. Hey, Nikki. Oh, oh, that's good to hear. So, oh, Wendy and Nikki. Wendy says, I feel like I cannot find my rhythm. Tired? Yes. But I think that is why I'm tired. Wendy? Oh boy, I'm with you there. And Nikki says, that's exactly how I'm feeling today. Fed up, listless, and doing art is all I can do today. So, you know what? Thank you so much for sharing that because, uh, well, one, it's good to know that I'm not feeling alone. And I suspect that there are other folks out there who are maybe feeling or experiencing the same things and not necessarily knowing how to put that into words or perhaps they're judging themselves for just being in that place. But I think there's something about this time of year. So right now for us, what, that's like late November. It feels like a year has suddenly disappeared and we're right at the holidays or entering into that season again. This is a time of transition seasonally when things are kind of putting themselves to bed 
and there's a chill in the air that makes us all want to blanket nest and just stay at home with a warm cup of tea or cocoa or whatever it might be. And there's a natural tendency, I think, a natural, you know, we want to rest. I think there's so much that we've done. And I don't know about you, but every once in a while it sneaks up on me. I feel like I've got this great life work balance in the works and then I get caught up in things, which is not a bad thing, but suddenly I find myself exhausted and disoriented and listless, that interesting thing. And Wendy talking about that sense of not being out of step with ourselves somehow. It's a great thing that we can recognize that. So that's, you know, that's an opportunity to pat ourselves on the back and just acknowledge where we're at. And if you can, take some time just to be with that today, without judgment, without fear of, you know, doing something wrong or being something wrong, just to acknowledge where that is and see where it takes you. Maybe there's something to be learned from being out of rhythm, from being out of step, from feeling at loose ends, listless, whatever, whatever it might be. Maybe there's something to learn from that and maybe the key to moving forward or just feeling relief is in that as well. You know, who knows? We'll find out together. I thank you so much for sharing that. And that's again, just that reminder to self-care, 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 whatever that might mean to you. And Nikki's saying, ah, oh, hot chocolate sounds good, but then I'm exhausted after a sugar high. Ever have these days when you just want an escape, but there's nowhere to go? Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. And isn't that a great way to describe a lot of what we've been going through in the last few years? Wanting an escape, but no, having nowhere to really, really go. And even if we try and put ourselves out there somewhere, maybe we're still seeking. Maybe it's not the answer. There's something else we're looking for. So knowing what that is, I don't know. And Nikki, yeah, Nikki says like, glad to know I'm not the only one feeling all of this. I don't think you are. And I think perhaps this is something that all of us might, at least I know, that I revisit this place every year around this time. If you're out there and you're feeling the same thing or something similar, please feel free to share it in the comments. You're not alone. You don't have to experience it all on your own. And it might not be a bad thing. It's just where we happen to be today. So on that note, Hmm. What do I want? What do I want to do? What do I want to do? I think I want to do a little, uh, a little warm up, a little warm up to explore all of that feeling at loose ends, listless, wandering, disoriented. It feels a little bit like a map that is really going or about nowhere, a map about no place. Maybe I'm not sure. Hello, Nicole. So to start, I'm not sure if I want to create a map, but I'm going to give myself a sense of place in this little warm up, and I'm just going to make a little circle on a piece of watercolor paper. And I'm going to go back to that good old warm up of filling it up with color, shape, line, texture, whatever it might be. I've got the idea, uh, like Nikki, that's such a, that image of, escape and wanting to escape but not knowing where to go. That's an interesting place to start. That feeling of feeling like, and as Wendy was saying, disoriented a little bit, feeling <sighs> just floating around. Maybe there's something there. I'm going to put myself in this little circle of color and maybe it'll be like a little ocean that I'm floating in. And maybe as I'm painting it, letting it out into the page, letting the art hold the hard stuff. Or the weird stuff, because I don't even know if it's hard sometimes. Maybe I'll discover where I am by exploring that feeling of being all over the place and nowhere all at once. And it's not necessarily a bad thing to feel. But I think we can be really hard on ourselves. We expect ourselves to know everything, have all the answers, be full of direction and discipline and staying on top of things. 
So these moments can certainly surprise us, take us off guard, and at least for myself, there's a feeling of, I should know better after all this time. I should be on top of this somehow. I should be able to get on out of this place. But maybe I'm meant to spend time in this place. And Nicole's saying, oh, lovely. Nicole's been working on Christmas gifts and just finished a dish towel dress. And you taught me what these were before. You explained that before. So I have this vision in my head of this little uh, dish towel skirt on a little crocheted kind of figure or bodice, like a little dress just created with a towel giving it some flow and shape in the skirt. Lovely gifts. And that's another thing that I turn to in times like this. And even in the main activity today, when I'm feeling a little at odds with myself, I like returning to something that has some structure and shape and form. Even providing containment for something like this and a little watercolor, a little mood circle. I can feel secure somehow, you know? Oh, and, and Nikki's asking, how did your session at Trent U go? So Trent U Durham, it was, we've had a couple of visits there and we're actually going back to, no, what day is it today? We're going back this Friday. Uh, they're just so fantastically supportive of the living room and they recognize what we do and they value what we do for the community. And I can't, you know, I'm so very thankful about that. But the few days we had there were fantastic. And if there are any Trent students out there who are watching or listening, uh, if you have comments or things you'd like to share about what that experience was like for you, please, please, please do. Because sometimes the encounters we have with students are fleeting. You can't take as much time as you would in the studio space to explore things that come up. And you want to be there for them and support them when they might only have half an hour in between classes. Or they might be prepping for a test and have that thing at the back of their mind that says, I need to get back. I need to get back to the books. I need to get back to studying. So you try to be present with them, meet their where, where they're at, learn about what they need in that moment, and do what you can to make that experience one of value for them. So I can't speak to what it was like for them, but I know that I always benefit when I'm out there with students. I feel like I learn and grow so much every single time we're out there in the field, out there in the community. And I feel like students, for you know, for the record, from what they did share, they're feeling what we're feeling too. A sense of perhaps rushing through the rest of the year, building up to something, and then when we arrive at this something, this somewhere, we look around and it's not at all where we expected to be. So of course we're disoriented. Good opportunity to sit. Find some stillness if that's what makes you feel good. And just experience whatever it is you're going through. Through some kind of creativity. Of course that's what I'm going to do. I'm biased. <laughs> but sometimes it's helpful to experience something through a slightly different lens, you know? <laughs> and Nicole saying after her present, her gift making of uh, dish towel dresses, there are towels everywhere. Now I'm imagining you in some kind of in like really crafty bathhouse just with terry cloth flying around. Terry cloth and crochet materials everywhere. Safety first, Nicole. Don't get caught up in it all. Don't become a human, a human... Uh, Dish, dish cloth dress, dish towel dress. It can happen. No, that's just me being silly. It can't happen. You know that. And Nikki says, love the painting you were doing. It looks like the earth from space. You know what? That's sometimes what happens with these circle, these little circle paintings. They turn into these beautiful little marbles. And maybe that's part of the process that I find comforting, that it, it maybe unconsciously reminds me of the earth, it gives me distance from where I'm at right now, helps me locate myself, if that makes sense. Just that little bit of perspective that helps, 
helps me pull, like I pull back and I get to examine things at a distance. And whenever I create one of these and it reminds me of the earth, there is that moment of, of recognition. Of like, oh, okay, I am here. Maybe I can look into this thing that I've just created and ask myself, where am I in this art? If I had to be somewhere, if I was somewhere, where would I be? And just knowing that there's somewhere in this that I can be, if it is the earth, that's a very comforting thought. And if you've never done a little mood circle painting before, I invite you to do it. If you have watercolor materials, if you don't have watercolor materials, you can also use, there's anything you like. You can use pencil crayon markers. You can get creative with food coloring even. And if you can, I know this is not easy for everyone to do, but to give yourself permission to go with the flow and not expect anything to come of it. Just see where the colors take you, see what colors you're drawn to and where they might, where they might flow. And Nicole saying, I found the coolest thing for my friend for her birthday. It's a board that you fill with water, then you use a brush Oh, lovely, to paint on it. It makes it look like you're using ink. When the water evaporates, the painting disappears, and then you can make something new. I've heard about those, and I've seen those. Sometimes we had uh, a few at the studio until they went walkabout. I know sometimes they might be referred to as, as a Buddha board, but I'm not sure if that's the actual name of that. I'm not sure what material they're made out of either, but it's a very beautiful thing. A beautiful, um, what's the word, ephemeral? this sense of creating something that you know will disappear. So for that moment, it's all about being in the flow, being in process with something, allowing it to be created, appreciating it, and then being able to let it go afterwards. Although I suppose you could take a little picture of it now with the technology we have. And Nikki saying, I'm teaching some students that tell me they are feeling really isolated, tired, and really anxious, but they don't know what they are. They don't know what they are feeling anxious about. They don't seem to be able to identify the source of the anxiety, but they are anxious about everything. Can't sleep and can't talk about it. Can't find the words. That is why I think we need more creative outlets like what you're doing at Trent. Oh, Nikki, Nikki, Nikki! Thank you so much for saying that. That's you know what you've always been a champion of the studio as well, and you recognize the value of having other outlets to express things, to help make sense of things. It's not always about, of course, it's not always about language. It's not about, you know, being able to identify and examine and fix things that are going on. Sometimes it's just enough to, like the wonderful gift you're giving your students of allowing them to name that feeling of strangeness, of uncertainty and anxiety that they're experiencing. And I think it's not only, I mean, not only students that are experiencing this. I've spoken to a lot of educators like yourself, people in those fields who are working with youth or students or adults in school. The educators, the teachers out there are, are feeling this weirdness as well, this strange, tired anxiety. And, and feeling, I think like we're all feeling perhaps, well, I don't know, who am I to say? I can only speak to what I experience in this moment and be as honest as I can about not knowing where it's going and that I've had to, and I have to take care of myself and acknowledge it, even though I don't know how to fix it. Um, and maybe it won't be something that can be fixed, but there is this feeling of thinking that everyone else has a sense of what's going on in the world, right? That some, they all seem to have the answers and be moving forward, and yet I don't. Why am I still feeling anxious? Why am I still feeling worried? Why am I still concerned about a global pandemic or the, the way things are changing so rapidly, the way, you know, all the different things we're confronting and working with now? And I think everyone might be struggling with these things. Everyone might be feeling some kind of response to what we've been going through for almost two years now. And yet we don't 
have the same spaces or permission to explore things or discuss things in the way that we once did. We don't have the same uh, ability to be still and just stop and take that break for ourselves. We have to process things on our feet. And that's messy and it's confusing and it will feel uncertain and every time I think I have an idea or some sense of clarity about what the answer might be or how things will move forward, I'm that, like the Buddha board that Nicole's talking about, it suddenly it vanishes or it shifts and it changes into something else. And it's really hard with that inner critic, the expectations that I've put upon myself or that I think uh, others expect of me, the things I think other people expect of me, it's really hard for me not to dislike that part of myself, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, so it is so, so interesting. So that, that tool that Nicole was talking about that I just referenced again, it's called a Buddha board. She said she's going to practice her Chinese symbols on it. Nicole says, oh, fantastic. And then Nikki's saying, everyone is feeling that way, Mary. I think we don't know how to process this. We are all struggling to figure it out. Then, you know what? That's good to know as well. And I think in situations like that, we're in, we're in the middle of something so profound and altering, life-altering for many of us, without knowing how exactly our lives are being altered, all we can do is try to stay in this moment all we can do is take care of the things that we know we can take care of, which includes ourselves, our loved ones, being able to manage the little things in every day that give us a sense of satisfaction and achievement and purpose, even if that's just making your bed, <laughs> uh, baking a batch of cookies, um, answering one of the thousands of emails you might have in your inbox, or reading that chapter for school, finishing that project, working on one more paragraph in your essay. There are lots of things that can help, that can bring back that sense of agency to ourselves and our own lives. We don't have to figure everything else out. Hmm. I think one of the lovely myths about adulthood or adulting is that adults have it all figured out. And then as an adult, because I don't have things figured out, I'm constantly asking myself, well, when am I going to grow up? When am I going to arrive? When am I going to become an adult? Because I don't have anything figured out. <laughs> and then slowly, bit by bit, through connecting with others who also call themselves grown up, you realize that, oh, it's a state of flux. This adulting thing is all about transition and flow and finding opportunities to be spontaneous and flexible on the day to day, not knowing what the day might look like. No one's got it figured out. Find me the person who has it figured out, please. Please find me that person. <laughs> oh, and Nicole's saying, I just bought a reusable sketchbook on Amazon. I love my reusable notebook. So I thought I'd try the sketchbook version as well. I've heard about these, Nicole. So these, it's a special kind of, you know what, I've heard about them. I've seen them uh, online, but I've yet to experience one myself. But it is, is it an erasable kind of, it's like a hybrid between digital, and you can maybe, you can try explaining it, Nicole, because I'm not sure I grasp it myself. But if it is what I think it is, it sounds pretty, pretty cool. I think I'm just gonna... Maybe it's almost time to set this aside and visit something else. Oh, Nikki's saying, I find a lot of comfort in hearing that today. And Nikki says, I find, uh, find the person who has it figured out and they are lying. None of us have it all figured out. And that brings me a lot of comfort to hear that today, Nikki. <laughs> I 
Yeah, it's a it's a weird and wonderful life we have. It's an absolute gift. And yet Isn't it funny how that one, those self-expectations, those things we assume and expect of ourselves can just somehow get in the way and put a crimp in that flow and prevent us from being present. Hey, Daryl. <laughs> just saying, sup, sup, right back at you. Uh, Liz saying, I think even as adults, we never have anything fully answered or figured out. Hello, Alicia. As I get older, I realize that my parents can be more honest about the things in life they're still learning. And we end up fostering this beautiful relationship where they learn from me, and in turn, I learn from their lived experiences. Absolutely. Right? Daryl's saying hi to everyone. Oh, and saying, whoa, love that watercolor. Well, thank you very much. Just a little warm-up I'm doing, and now I'm going to move on to something a little more practical. Well in my mind, practical. Just how practical it is, I don't know. I don't exactly know. But that's a lovely thing, Alicia, when you can get to that place where you can have those kind of conversations with your family, or you begin to see that they feel comfortable enough to reveal those things. Maybe not everyone's parents can put those things into words, right? And some of us maybe never had the opportunities to have those conversation with, conversations with our parents. But I think we can, we begin to see things and reflect on things and, whoops, notice things that we perhaps didn't notice when we were younger, when we were so busy looking and waiting and wanting to arrive, not necessarily realizing that, oh wait, we're here already. This is exactly where we need to be. And Nicole revisiting this wonderful notebook. Okay, the reusable notebooks. Okay. This is cool. Let's see if I can understand it now. Nicole says, you can use a friction, a friction, is that how you say it? Marker on it. The pages, the pages are a thin plastic and can be used multiple times. Mine has 20 pages and is A4 sized. You can use water uh, as, oh, the eraser, water as the eraser at the back of the marker or water to wipe it off. The ink will stay on for months as long as you don't accidentally get it wet. So that sounds like a very, very funky invention. And I think, you know, it's an interesting sustainable option as well. I have some of those friction highlighters that you can erase. And the first time I used them, <sighs> they were amazing. All you other stationary nerds out there, they are so much fun. Erasable highlighters, where have they been all my life? So I can understand the attraction of the, like the erasable pens and the erasable markers. The technology is just so much further than it ever was when, you know, those kind of things were first introduced. So what am I making today? I suppose I should stop and explain. So talking about structure and being able to contain things and when I'm feeling out of sorts and floating all around untethered, it's good to be able to acknowledge that and experience it and just be with that because I'm not necessarily going to figure it all out by trying desperately to search or, you know, run around banging into walls. The other thing that helps is to create something that makes sense to me in a sense of something that's practical, even if it's not very practical. And today what that looks like is a little mini book. So this is a very, very small version that I've made in the past. And there's actually a little workshop on, on YouTube where I've made these little book pendants, these miniature book pendants. And they're just lovely and cute and they just feel good to create. Something so small, it's like baking a cookie, something that is just enough as it is, right? Perfectly imperfect, that's all you need. So. Thinking about that and miniature books and not necessarily, I don't necessarily want to make something as tiny as that today. I want to make a slightly larger version of this that can be used in, actually Nikki, this, uh, the activity we're working on with Trent U Durham students this week, which is a self-care advent calendar project, which I might revisit 
next week here in the live stream. Oh, Daryl loves miniatures. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for the compliment saying it's super cool. Yeah, I have a fondness for miniatures as well. And again, like practical, but also completely impractical. Who needs that? Who needs that in their life? Well, I need it right now. And that's enough, right? <laughs> the little things that make us happy, that bring us joy, that can allow us to be present in this moment and just appreciate whatever happens to be on hand. And Nikki says, that sounds like fun. And Ashley's saying hello. Hello, Ashley. Nikki says, that sounds like fun. Wish I went to Trent, you Durham. <laughs> well, next Wednesday, I'm going to do it here. I feel, I think that's what's going to happen. And of course, the idea of Advent calendars, it's not necessarily uh, a religious thing, even though we're coming up into the festive season here. I feel like it has more to do with and maybe this also relates to this experience of feeling disoriented and listless and not quite tired, not quite sure of uh, what's happening, where we're going and why my wheels are spinning. But the sense of marking time, being able to recognize that we can break things down into manageable units that we can tackle as it feels right to do so. So I love the idea of ritual and I think rituals across all cultures, all faiths, everywhere. This idea of how we make meaning of things within our days and how we might look to the chaos and find ways to make it manageable and make it, you know, something we can work with, even if we can't, if we can't prevent chaos, because I don't know if anyone can. And of course, chaos isn't always chaos, is it? Sometimes chaos is just something we don't understand, figuring itself out in a way that doesn't quite make sense to us yet. So, advent calendars. <laughs> and hello, oh, hello, Andrea. Andrew says, hi, Mary. I always seem to jump on and say hi and then dash off for work stuff, but I wanted to say hi. Miss you lots. Miss you too, Andrea. And hopefully with the mobile art hive, we'll be able to get out there and come visit you and the folks you work with soon. So keep an eye out for an email coming from the living room about that soon. Would love to reconnect with everyone in your community. And I hope you're doing well too. I hope everyone who's watching or listening today is doing okay. But if you're not, that's okay too. That's okay to not be okay. To be able to acknowledge that is an amazing thing. So again, just revisiting that piece. If all you can do today is acknowledge what you're feeling and where you're at and that it may not be the exactly perfect day you want to have, that's okay. That's huge to be able to recognize that. And Nikki says, it would be interesting to make the little book and put a clock on the cover, time ticking away. <laughs> oh, and Andrea coming back with, would love that. Send big hugs. Sending, well, I take those, I take those virtual hugs. I take them. And I uh, send them right back out there to anyone who might need a virtual hug. Finding ways to connect it that are safe and manageable is like definitely on our minds and we're looking for ways to do that. So my accordion page here, as I'm chatting away, I'm not folding it ex precisely as precisely as I should, but hey, who cares? It will be what it will be. And this little book, so how does this fit into an advent calendar? Well, I think uh, we're going to be looking using, using an advent calendar with little envelopes and things like that. So I was thinking about the kinds of things I'd want to put in the advent calendar pockets or envelopes little things that remind us like on a daily basis, just one, like simple things to take care of ourselves. Simple, simple reminders of ways we can take breaks, uh, enjoy the time we have, enjoy the moment. And this might be a little gratitude book, maybe. I'm not sure. It might go in one of those little pockets all on its own. And of course, I love books. Today I was thinking about making, here's one I had, I found when I was looking through things, just a matchbook book, which is lovely, using some old cardboard, you can use cereal boxes, I think. Yeah, this is some kind of repurposed 
uh, cardboard there with some repurposed sketchbook, uh, I think, paper inside as little leaves, as little pages. Just fun ways to make different kinds of books, little tiny things. And again, for folks who love those miniatures, there's lots of different ways to create things, right? That are small, tiny, throw in your pocket, throw in your bag. If you're working on anything miniature like that out there in the world, let me know. I'm always interested to see, interested to see what folks are working on. So these little accordion papers become the pages of my books. It's that simple. And you can make your book as thick as you want to by just linking these together, gluing these strips together. And Nicole's saying, my friends have bought knitting advent calendars before. Each day comes with a bit of yarn and in the end you make a pair of socks. So you just keep adding on to the socks and creating the socks throughout the month. That's amazing. I love that idea. And an advent calendar could be for the entire month, but it can also be for several days in the lead up to certain special occasions that you might have. It doesn't even have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be the big, the big C, the big Christmas day kind of thing. It can be any significant day for you, a made up day for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones. It can be, you know, this is a season of so like where cultural traditions begin to pile on top of one another in a lovely, delightful way. But maybe you want to create a special day just for yourself, a ritual just for yourself that has nothing to do with anything else. Something that could be woven into your celebrations in this time of, you know, around this time of year moving forward. And Daryl's saying, I've tried knitting very hard. Daryl, you know what, I have to be honest, and it, you know, my, this might be my inner critic piping up, but I am, you know, knitting and me, we don't get along so well either. Which is a shame because the studio, we have so much yarn that's donated to us every year. And the, I can't wait for the next yard sale we have. We haven't been able to have a stuff a bag yard sale in years. And actually, Andrea, I might be connecting with Andrea and the folks Andrea works with about this, about having some kind of collaborative yard sale in the spring. But uh, yeah, I've got, I'm surrounded by beautiful yarn and yet knitting, <sighs> just one of those things, speaking like it's one of those I, go with the flow and it's like a lovely check-in meditative activity, like a form of creation that asks you to be in the moment and available for every single stitch. Even if you get to the point as a knitter where you can kind of do something else while you knit. But for me, all my knitting kind of gets crunchier and crunchier as I go, as my stitches get more and more tense and tight. And I have yet to master just the Zen of knitting, I suppose, like so many other amazing creators in the community have. Same with crochet for me. So here we are, let's see. I think I wanna add in another set of pages. For this little book, whatever it might be. What should it be, folks? What kind of book should this be today? Should it be a gratitude book? Should it be... Maybe it's meant to be a one-word a one -word poetry book every day, every page of the book. You just write one word that kind of encapsulates or captures the day for you your experience of the day, a one word journal. It's one of the things I love about journaling with color, like the warm activity, warm up activity that I did, making that like mood circles, I find a really relaxing and satisfying way to document things for myself. It doesn't require language. I don't need to define things or even understand what I'm feeling. I just choose a color Start with one color and then fill the circle. I can add in other colors, whatever feels right. But I don't have to understand or make sense of any of it right away. But when I look back at it, flipping through the pages of my week or my month or my year, 
suddenly you begin to recognize patterns and things do begin to make sense, like that perspective I was mentioning. Like having a good art journal or a bad art journal. Who says it has to be good art? An ugly art journal. All of those things give us permission to just capture things, moments, and revisit them when we can, if we want to understand them, if we want to revisit them. Sometimes it's also enough just to let them go, right? This glue stick. You are a very stubborn glue stick. And maybe that's what this will be, this journal. Maybe this journal will be a very tiny sketchbook. A very tiny sketchbook where I can fill each page with color color to capture my day, to describe the moment, the thing that I might be feeling. Now, if I was super, super fancy here, after I bound this, you, you know, you could go through and slice up, like slice these accordion pages to free them so that you have a different page, similar to when you're creating signatures uh, for hand bound books. And that's a whole other art form, isn't it? But for today, I'm going to just start with that. Now I have my little accordion. <laughs> I'm gonna make a cover for it. So what kind of cover material do I have on hand here? Oh, so many materials. What about this? So any old piece of cardboard would do a nicely sized one or maybe hmm, let's maybe use something even a little more simple yeah I'm just going to free cut this to create a little cover for myself And if you're tuning in just around now wondering what the heck I'm doing, I'm making a slightly larger version of this miniature book. As we explore what it's what it means to be moving through these days. To feel to acknowledge feelings of tiredness, of feeling untethered, disoriented, perhaps you know at the same time exhausted and lacking in motivation when knowing there's so much to do, having this sense of so much that has yet to be done. There's lots of reasons we might be feeling all those things, but when we feel those things, it's definitely important to recognize them, acknowledge them and be kind to ourselves. So one of the things that helps me be kind to myself is to create things, oops, to create things that have a sense of purpose. And even though this tiny little book won't necessarily <laughs> change anything about the world or fix anything, it helps me feel like I've accomplished something. How much did I give myself over there? Well, why don't I fold it over and see? Oh, I wonder, do I have a bone folder here? Oh, not today. Not today. Mm. Oh, hi, darling. I was looking for you the other day. What I am going to do is maybe use this ruler to help fold this over. Just to give a little crease to help guide me. And I'm going to do the same on this other side. And then I'll cover this. So 
So I'm just creating the tiniest of covers for my book. Trimming away the excess and throwing that over there on the pile of things that I do need to tidy. See, there's never a shortage of things to do. Never a shortage. <laughs> I think we all, we can all experience and relate to that. Now, what do I want to cover this with? I have some of these fabrics that I've put aside here. Maybe this is the one. I've not used this one yet. Hmm. Kind of vibrant quality to it. A bit of the autumn, the leaves, the colors of a strange fall. But is there enough there to wrap around? Maybe not. So maybe today is the day. Oh, interesting. Sailboats? Hmm. No. Oh, which one did you like? Daryl's saying, I like that one lots. Which one was it? This purple one? This sort of purpley green. What else have, do we have in here? There's also this one. Would this one be? I could, I mean, it might wrap around. I might have enough there to wrap around. Mm. Maybe not though. If I use, if I fold the book that way, I do. So I could get creative. So that's what I'm going to do. Which one? Oh no, I missed it. So this one or this one, the leafy one, the leafy one, I think you're saying. All right. The leafy one it is. And then what I'm going to do I'm just going to use this as a little template and I'm going to do a couple of I'm going to cover each cover separately and then maybe use some washi tape for the spine. And of course, as many of the things I do on these live streams, they're all a little bit experimental. All a little bit wonky. And Nikki's saying, that's so cute. I'm going to make one. Excellent. Yay. So what happens here? Oh yeah, no, we can do this. We can do this. So what have I got here? I think I'm going to, no, I feel like, I'm wondering if I could use this. I'm just going to try using a glue stick on this because sometimes that's what we have, right? I try to create things here with materials that a lot of folks you might have up on hand already or things that you can find easily. So let's start with this. Yeah, let's just go for it. I think that's how I learn. I don't know what kind of learners you folks are at home, but for me, the instructions to something can be right in front of my face and I can follow them, but it's only until I dive in in a spontaneous way and experience the process myself through trial and error that I really figure something out. So which way do we want that to be? I think I want that to be like that. Yep. If there are any professional bookbinders out there, you might be screaming, yelling at the TV or your device. And I'm just going to trim away the excess there. A 
And now we're just going to fold those pieces over. So what I might also do, just a little sewing, taking a page out of the sewing book, is to make those corners a little more foldable. If you had fabric glue, you could be using it, absolutely, or white tacky glue, you could be using that too. Rubber cement would probably work as well. Again, if there's an easy solution, if there's something out there like a glue stick that works, go for it. I fold these little corners over a little bit to make the, the fold in the raw edges of all the fabric that's there. If you know what I mean by raw edges, for those of you who aren't familiar with sewing terms, that's just like the edge of the fabric that's cut where the threads can get loose and tear away, unravel. That's what a raw edge is. We try to tuck all those threads inside so that things won't unravel. But we will be covering the inside of these book covers with another little page, like a little uh, lovely insert. To just give it a little fanciness. So don't worry, you don't have to worry as much about those threads right there. This, to me, this kind of activity is the equivalent of baking a cookie. <laughs> Something small and manageable that I can do in a short period of time. That brings me some joy. And Daryl's saying, I'm trying to find a place ooh, to get plastic trim and a good adhesive, but I'm not sure where. So interesting. So trying to find a place. So you're looking for a place like a place to be, like a home place. That's a difficult journey, and even in the best of times, I'm sending you all the, all the positive vibes possible. And to get a plastic trim and a good adhesive, do you mind explaining a little bit more about what you'd be using that for? There might be folks listening or watching who might be able to help and be a resource. All right, now let's look over. I'm gonna lean over here, just to look into my artsy tapes, my washi tapes, unless I move them all out to the Bus, and I might have done that. In which case, I'll be creating my own washi tape. Wouldn't be the first time. Yeah, this is a, for a project you're working on. Ah, I see, I see, I see, I see. Let's take a plastic trim and a good adhesive, but I'm not sure where. Do you need, what kind of adhesive do you need? Something that, um, works well with plastic. The world of adhesives, that's, that is a journey all on its own there. Okay. Now this is, for example, I have some Gorilla Glue here. This is a, you've probably used Gorilla Glue before and you need, so Daryl saying, I need to put trim on wood. Wood glue, Gorilla Glue might work. It's, yeah, stone, metal, ceramic, foam, glass, and more, and wood right there. Depends how much you need and the kind of expanse you're working with. There must be some woodworkers out there who are listening or people who have experience with that kind of thing. And if I can think of something, I will let you know. Before I do that, I want to do this as well. So I'm going to cover the spine. I'm going to wrap this right now. And of course, doing a tester can help. As an impatient maker, I never do that. I should. 
<laughs> I should always trial things out. What would look, what would work really nice on this? Oh, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. I have some of this felt. I'm going to use some of this felt. Going to use some felt, folks. So let me just measure off how much I need to do here. Doing a tester, always a useful thing. Especially if you have a project of that nature, it sounds like something you want to get right the first time you do it. Maybe not in the spirit of Mary's experiment now and redo later. Fly by the seat of your pants making. So this might be too thick. But let's give it a go and see what happens. Once, uh, yeah, maybe it is, maybe it is. Maybe too thick. I think that's too thick. I'll put that aside. Thank you for your service felt. I'll find another purpose for you. But I like the idea of some a slightly different kind of quality of paper somehow. Oh. Maybe some tissue paper, huh? Hmm, there we go. And Nikki asking, what kind of project, everyone? Yeah, so that's a good a good question to have, be able to figure out. And I think that's to Daryl. And Simone saying, hello, hello, Simone. Hello, everyone. I was creating earlier this morning, but enjoying the vibes here with a nice cup of vanilla chai tea and a blanket. Love this idea, Mary. Ah, oh, well, thank you. It's part of that process, huh? Figuring out what it will, what is it that we want to make today? What kind of creative energy that do we have to share, to put into a project. It's not always, doesn't always have to be a big thing. Oopsie. Oh, hello, tissue paper. That'll still work. So I'm going to put the paper, I'm going to do one more time. I'm going to do this. Sometimes you just don't have the spoons to create something in a big, big way. Or a big thing, a big project. That's more like it, I think. Just letting that soak in a little bit. Oh, interesting. Okay. And uh, Daryl says just something new I'm trying with regards to the project that you're working on. Very interesting, very interesting. And not sure if it'll turn out well. Well, you know what? One step at a time. And there are lots of folks out there who can be a resource to you. Wendy says, I found LePage or LePage construction adhesive has worked for you, for me in the past. Stuck plastic trim to paneling. Yeah, Wendy is such a creative force of nature. Many different kinds of projects, the you know, one hummingbird lane jewelry, but also like upcycling and repurposing, but also a restorer of houses as well, a saver of houses. There's a lot of creativity going on there in one Wendy that I admire enormously. So Daryl, that might be something you want to investigate, maybe. Maybe, but safety first. There are folks out there, so many folks that would be happy to share their wisdom, share their advice. I know a lot of the folks now who are working out there in places, you know, those construction big box stores, you know, all of them. So many of them are working there because it's something they love. It's something they love to do. They love to build. They like to experiment. They love to just be on the growing edge of the available tools and supplies that are out there to create extraordinary things at that level. They'd be happy to help you too, right? All right. Do, 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 do. 
catching up with this the scrolly scroll. Well, I hope it turns out well, Daryl. I hope it does, depending on... Yeah. It's always difficult to know without seeing a picture of things as well, which reminds me... Of course, folks, you are welcome. So I used some tissue paper on that spine there. Let's see. I think inside I'll use some of this lovely paper that was donated. Um, let me finish that other thought. <laughs> uh, after this post, usually around quarter to four or 4 p.m., we put up a show and tell post. So if you do have pictures of things, projects, ideas you want to share, if there's links to artists or makers or people out there in the world who inspire you, who've been helping you get by or helping you rebuild or discover things about yourself during these strange and difficult times, please, 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 please feel free to share those images, share those links, shine a light on what you do. This seems like it was ready, ready cut for this project. So I'm just going to go with the flow. I love doing the live streams because I get to learn about things in real time, but I know not everyone can watch this in real time and not everyone can spend the whole hour and a half here. That's okay. I get it. I'm not the boss of you. So you're more than welcome to revisit this live stream once it's been archived, to tune in, to share pictures of what you're working on, things that you're loving. And you just never know the thing you're working on might be the thing that inspires someone else. The creative issue you're troubleshooting right now might be the thing that has been stumping someone else out there in the community for ages. And hearing you give voice to it today, whether it's a creative, one of those creative things that's been stumping you, or perhaps, you know, one of those creative life things that's been stumping you. You just never know. Someone else out there might need to hear that being given voice to, and once they know that they're not alone, everything begins to open up for them. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So now is the debate. Now we debate. Do I just fold this over and create the, yeah, yeah, why not? I'm really flying by the seat of my pants here. I do have yeah, like as I mentioned, that YouTube tutorial for the miniature book pendants. I think it's a part of the World Wide Web workshop series that we tried to start kickstart a few years ago when we had the studio space. And it was super fun to do. It was a part of our fundraising for our fifth birthday, um, the living room's fifth birthday celebration. I think it's still out there, so if you missed this or you want something that's a little more comprehensive, <laughs> focused perhaps, feel free to tune into that and watch it as well. All right. So just going to revisit and recrease. Now, it would be super fun to spend more time in making more pages for this book. But for now, I'm going to stick with this. Oh, that's what I shouldn't have put that on yet. That's what was going on. Haha, -ha, mistake. Love it. It's a wonderful thing about a glue stick. You can peel off. That's why I forgot what's happening here. That's why. What I'm going to do is stick in the pages first. Yes, folks, I'm going to stick in the pages first. Now, a little trick that I've learned, I've learned before as well, when creating your own notepads and things like that, I could, and maybe I should, adding a, a strip of tacky glue down the spine of your pages can, can help create um, a kind of backbone, a little spine. To your signature pages. And if I had a little piece of sandpaper, which I don't think I do, I might even sand those edges down before I add the glue. Oops, come here. 
This is when we see if the glue actually works. But I might as well take this opportunity to do so. And it just sticks those pages together and adds a little... Oh, come on. This is one of those moments where the glue just might explode everywhere. Oh, well, maybe there's something there. But for now, I will do this. And I'm going to fold down one of those pages onto the side and the end page over on that side. And then I will revisit with this. That's what that page was for. And that's why I was questioning in that moment. So you could just have the book like so, but then you can also cover up to create an insert cover page, which is kind of nice and just gives us a little bit of polish. So I'll do that right now. Perfectly imperfect, flying by the seat of one's pants. Oopsie, come back here. Come back there, paper. Maybe that's a sign I need to add a little bit more glue on underneath. There we go. And here we are. Ah, <sighs> there we do. There we, that's how, that's how it goes for today. Just adds a little bit more finesse, I suppose, to my lovely little perfectly imperfect book. And you can get as fancy as you want with this. If you have specialty fabrics at home, you might have little scraps of leftover leather from various projects. And there's color coming off on those pages and I have no idea how it got there. <laughs> now I want to bring back a little more of the spine-like quality to this book. So this is where this little bull clip comes in. I love when we get bull clips in at the studio as donations. They can be used in so many ways. But just to help that glue set and to give it that kind of lovely little indent, I'll clip on these pieces and I'll just hold it in place as everything's setting and gelling. And there you go. That's really all there is to it. Again, you can get as fancy as you like with this, but to start, that's what it is. Accordion paper, create a little cardboard cover, cover that with fabric, insert your accordion pages into the book, add your little insert pages to the insides of the covers just to give it a little fancy color. And you could also make a little insert for the cover of this book too, if you wanted to personalize it as a gift or something, give it a title. There's so much you can do, whatever you like to do. But I let this, I'll let this sit, I'll probably let it sit overnight. And you can even see how it's beginning to kind of crunch that there. So here, let me go in a little closer. Oops, that was a little, got a little, little uh, Camp Rainbow Phoenix there for a moment. Yeah, just these little clips give it just a little bit of an indent to kind of create that idea of a spine. And then when it's done, I'll probably go over the cover with a little bit of Mod Podge just to set that paper. We can also come in, add in washi paper. Once everything's set inside, we can open up those pages inside. Then you have more pages to work with, more fun, all that stuff. <sighs> but now I'm back here. I can't believe I actually finished a project a little bit before the end of the live stream. What am I going to do now? What do I do now, folks? <laughs> well, let's set that aside and I'm gonna return. Let's see. Maybe I will make... <sighs> you know what? I started with this. Maybe I'll end with this too. 
I grounded myself into the process with this. Maybe I'll use, create another kind of mood circle to explore where I'm at at the end. Why not? Trying not to think about things too much. Just to let it be whatever it wants to be. There I am. There's a watercolor brush for me. And if I was drawn to those blues and greens at the beginning, which for me are always colors of reflection and clarity and soothing colors, nature colors, and especially this time of year when I look out and, well, no, you know, that's not true. Things aren't very gray. I see a beautiful blue sky here. I see the branches, dark, beautiful gray against that vibrant sky with the wispy clouds behind it. No, there's still plenty of color in our world right now. But maybe that's a part of the weirdness of this season as well in this period of transition. That sense of unexpected. Maybe it's uh, part of awaiting the winter and seeing what happens, what's waiting for us. Not an easy time for a lot of people. So reaching for the reds. And maybe that's just part of the seasonal time. Uncertainty, strangeness. Oh, Nikki wants to hear about Christmas plans. Well, every year, my wish, if I had a magic wand, would be just to have unlimited time to read, to watch movies, and kind of be unresponsive, but on my own terms, not completely unresponsive to the world, but to not feel the obligations of having to show up or be a certain way for anyone other than myself, which is maybe a good way, you know, maybe that's just the desire I have for my life as well, you know? Maybe each one of us, that's part of what we want, to arrive at a certain kind of place where we can be ourselves and know, just live in that comfort of being ourselves every single day. Not all of us can be. Perhaps some writing. So doing, returning to some of the creative practices that I don't have as much time for in other parts of the year. And like many of you out there, I'm sure, I also have these ideas of this will be the year where I set this in practice, where I embed this new ritual, where I become the person who does this. <laughs> and every year I get a little bit closer to some things and I discover other things that I thought I wanted I don't actually want, which is a powerful thing. But we have an opportunity with the living room because we have a new way of engaging with the community We'll be back in between grants for programming, which means we will have to make new boundaries again. We'll have to make new plans for how we come back and reconnect with community after the holiday break. And we may not be able to do as much virtual programming as we like, but we're hoping that we'll be able to be out there with the mobile art studio more. In fact, keep an eye out the week of December 13th, we hope to introduce everyone to the studio virtually through a, a recognition event that we'll be holding online. So we're making a little video about the Mobile Art Hive. And I'm going to be spending more time just getting to know it, this art project that we suddenly have now. Because I don't like thinking of what we do through the living room as programming or uh, a service. You know, it's it's something different. And I think the reason why it works is because it's different, because art hives are somewhere in between all of those things. And we have a little more freedom to be spontaneous and to play. 
And then this time I've had with the studio, so it's been what, eight years now altogether? I think the one thing that I've learned, the one thing that I keep coming back to is that it is alive somehow. It is organic in the sense that it has a will of its own. It has a desire of something it wants to become. And it's I'm responsive to it and it's responsive to me the same way that it's responsive to the community and what the community's desires are. And we'll have an opportunity to explore that a little bit more. So I think over the holidays, giving myself some downtime to pull back a little bit, tend to myself as I hope you all have an opportunity to tend to yourselves and take care of yourselves. We'll be learning a little bit more about what that looks like and what it wants to be, what the mobile art hive wants to be starting out. Because right now it's just very tiny baby steps. But we shall see, we shall see. But folks, what are you gonna do for the holidays? I'll throw that question right back out to everyone for the last little bit of this live stream. That's okay if you don't wanna share. It's okay if you just don't know. Holidays can be very strange and intense times. So I think over, over my time, I've also tried to take the pressure off to not have a whole bunch of stuff I'm trying to do all at once. Oh, and that's Alice. Can you hear Alice? Hi, Alice. Want to come up? <laughs> My Alice dog can sense that the live stream is coming to a close as well. Hmm, some vibrant red here, red and purple. What else do we have? But in the lead up to that, just as we're wrapping up, I suppose it's a good time as ever for a little housekeeping, a little living room housekeeping. We hope to be able to provide like some lovely online programming for folks in the lead up to 2022. We don't know what things will look like in the new year. We know we will be maintaining and continuing with some of our virtual programming, just not sure what yet. This might stay, I think because this is something that's manageable to do no matter what. But I want to be sensitive and sensi um, aware of all the folks who contribute and all the many ways they contribute because this project is really nothing without them. So we need to take care of ourselves and listen to those, those voices that say, you know, rest, take a break. You don't have to do this. You don't have to push through just because you feel like you should. You can step back, you can get perspective. If you're feeling crunchy and like resentful and resistant to what you're supposed to be doing, and I think this can apply to all of us, take that information, listen to that information. And if you can, step back, step back. So what if you need to take a break? If the thing that was supposed to get done doesn't get done today, what if it gets done tomorrow? Not all of us might have the luxury to do that, but if you do, if there's a way to negotiate that, to figure it out, or just to let it be, then why not? It's important to listen to ourselves because we do, all of us, work so hard in so many ways. Oh, wow, Nikki's saying, I'm usually in Italy at Christmas, but it's not likely this year. Maybe in Peterborough with my sister and family. Well, Peterborough may not be Italy, but I'm sure you can bring a little bit of Italy to Peterborough. Yeah, it's that idea, right, you know, right back to the beginning of this live stream when we were talking about the feeling, the desire to escape, to get out there somewhere, to be somewhere else and know that we're there, have a sense of being in place, rooted in place somehow. We won't always have that, but it begins with acknowledging where we're at now, even if where we're at now doesn't feel so good, doesn't feel so clear. Once we acknowledge that, then we can start planning and maybe imagining what we would like to draw into our lives 
which in your case might be a little bit of, like maybe a little bit of Italy to Peterborough. I can see that happening. Some panettone. <laughs> Sometimes it, all it takes is something small to bring back a rush of wonderful memories and a sense of being somewhere where we can't necessarily be in reality. <laughs> yeah, there are things, there are ways and we'll do what we can with what we have, no matter what. But if you're someone out there who's been feeling the strain, the tiredness, it's okay. Give yourself some time to rest if you can. Acknowledge those feelings when they come up and it's okay to feel those things. It's okay to feel those things. Not one of us has anything figured out entirely. And I think the best thing we can do, that anyone can do, is simply listen. Listen to what we're going through, acknowledge it. And if we can, give voice to it and ask for what we need. Identify what we need. Wow, that's a beautiful thing. And Nikki's saying, loving the circles art you are doing. Well, here we go. It's still wet and curvy, but there they are side by side. The beginning and the end of this live stream. Interesting ways to close out, don't you think? Let's see if I can get a little close up here of that too. Two feelings, two ways of being. Can't necessarily put them into words, but they capture something true. I love having a mood circle journal, and maybe that's what this will be. A little tiny mood circle journal, a pocket mood circle journal that I can take with me wherever I go, whether it's around the house or out in the community. Who knows, maybe one day out in the world. That could happen again. But for now, I think I'm going to wrap up and I'm so glad Nikki that you really enjoyed the session. I really enjoyed the honest conversations about where we're all at and what it's like to be, you know, for those of you who are out there like Nikki, who are working and supporting other folks, students, whomever, friends, family, whomever it might be. I think we're all feeling something. We're all feeling the tiredness, the weight, the sense of, I don't know, like something, change is coming maybe. Maybe that's what we're sensing. I don't know. But at the end of the day, all we can do is acknowledge that and understand that it's okay to be in that place. And if we need to, we can reach out for the supports that can help, help us get perspective on where we're at, right? And I think for me, knowing that I'm not alone, I'm not the only one feeling those things, especially around this time of year, is really powerful. So thank you so much for sharing to everyone who shared, to everyone who said hello, everyone who chatted, to everyone who maybe just listened and did their own thing in the background, especially if that thing was taking care of yourself. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being here and contributing to the creative energy of this hour and a half. I like what I've created today. I have no idea what tomorrow holds, but you know what, we'll see. And knowing that there's a fantastic community of folks out there like you makes it a lot easier to move into that unknown space. All right? So thank you. <laughs> and of course, if you have ideas or wishes or projects you're working on or things that are inspiring you, just another reminder to share them in the show and tell post after this on Facebook. And if you have any ideas or thoughts about things you'd love to see in the new year, why not? Yeah. Let's start getting those ideas out there now. Share them. Let us know if you have neighborhoods that you'd like the Mobile Art Hive to visit. If you'd have um, us maybe visit your neighborhood or an organization you work with, if there's opportunities to collaborate. We're getting to a point overall as a project where, you know, we don't know what the new year holds, but we want to start mapping out a few things. Our hope is that we'll have an idea of what outreach is going to look like this year, especially if we're in between grants. 
and that we'll be able to work to supporting that or seeking sponsors or fundraising for specific things that need it. But overall, we're looking for a very human pace, slow life movement, so that the living room, like we can enjoy what we do and how we do it and live the lives we want to live and take care of ourselves as we do that, as much as we encourage everyone we work with to do the same within their own lives. That's the kind of balance that we're looking for. It may not always be organized and tidy, but that's just maybe a part of that process of moving towards change and creating a new model, a new way of working with folks. Maybe it'll look a little chaotic, like my art studio. Maybe that's just the way it's going to be for a little while. I'm okay with that. <laughs> but folks, thank you so much for joining me today and hanging out and making art and sharing your heart and art with us. I uh, hope all your projects work out. If you're having any issues, please feel free to share and troubleshoot. What a great community of resources we have here. You never know where that solution might come from or that great idea that helps move things to the next place might come from. So don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it, okay? But in the meantime, until we can connect and create with one another again in person, I look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online. Oh, and don't forget, tomorrow, Thursday, 1 p.m., Alicia will be hosting a Healing Through Poetry workshop on Zoom. I can't believe I forgot to mention it. Yeah, it's posted on our Facebook events, so if you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do. That's tomorrow, Thursday, November 25th at 1 p.m. Join us in Zoom, folks. It's going to be a really lovely way to spend an afternoon, okay? All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being there for yourselves. And see you soon. Bye.